Today's task for the Cyan XB Mark II, uh, in Australia it's known as the Ruckus, is we're going to try and do a transmission oil and filter change. Uh, but once we got underneath we noticed a few little problems, so I'll get under there and show you what the problems are. Okay, so here we are under. This is the transmission pan. They did put a nice drain plug in, which is really helpful. Some of the older cars don't have that, and you have to break all the bolts first, and it drips everywhere. But the problem isn't this plastic piece, which is hiding some of the bolts. That, that comes off pretty easy. It's over here. It's this frame rail. This frame rail is hiding, and this, this is the most obvious one over here. It's hiding four bolts, so we've got to be able to get a wrench on these somehow. I've got a nasty feeling I'm going to have to take this uh, frame rail off, which I don't really want to do, <laughs> but we might just have to do it to be able to get access to it. Right, so we're taking off the uh, first plastic cover, this back portion. There's a bunch of plastic rivets and then a bunch of 10 millimeter bolt slash screws that we're taking out. And hopefully we can see a bit better what's going on. Okay, so we, we've got the plastic bit off that, that was covering this area, so that gives us good access to this front row of bolts, on front row of bolts on the sump. Um, so I'm evaluating whether it's a good idea to pull out these two big bolts here, here's the tight spot, we can barely get in, and pull out these two bolts at the back. So I'm looking for the steering, of, you know, I don't want to change any steering alignment or anything like that. I think that's all attached to this giant subframe at the back. All this stuff here is controlling the steering and the stuff back there. So I think this part is a subframe piece that I can remove um, without affecting any of the steering, which is very important because I don't want to do that. Does support the engine up the front here, but I think I'm not seeing a reason why I can't take that off. Okay, so we got the bolts out. There's long ones go at the front and short ones at the back, and I think the torque, the correct torque, is about 75. We tried tightening it, uh, and 75 seemed to be about 75 to 80 seemed to be about the torque to move them. So I'm going to go with that, it's close enough, uh, maybe we'll put them back at 80. <laughs> okay, but after we took them out, we're looking to see if we can see the bolts, there's a piece of plastic still hanging onto this, and no, we're going to have to take that piece of plastic off too, because we can't quite see the bolt heads, so we just will take the whole thing out, three plastic rivets to get off, two are visible, and one is hidden behind this piece, yay! I love taking off plastic. Okay, and there is the subframe piece removed. Nothing moved when, uh, when we took it off, so everything is fixed. But now we have nice access to all the bolts down here and across the back. So we can go ahead and do the pan removal, and uh, it should work out. The rest of it should be easy, right? It should be easy. Putting it back together will suck. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. So just to make it easier, we're using the using this screwdriver to get the oh, thank you washing machine to get the screws out because they got Loctite on them, and so it's a pain to take it out by hand. Go ahead. Yeah, this is much easier. <laughs> Torque is low. These are ten Ugh. foot pounds. Not with Loctite though. Oh, is it a bit more? <laughs> Have to overcome the screwdriver. Oh, might, might have to crack these first. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to crack them all first and then use the power driver to get them out. Alright, so we're in the process of taking the last bolt out on the last corner. We're starting to peel it. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get the bolt out first. That might stay up because the gasket is kind of stuck. Yeah, got it. Yeah, that way it can't fall into my drain pan. <laughs> then the next trick is to get the pan to come down nice and level, otherwise, so, is it coming? It's probably the gasket is yeah, stuck. Yeah, it's sticky on this side, here we go. Alright, that looks 
pretty darn clean in there, doesn't it? Yeah. And we'd love to keep it that way, so no dust, please. Dust go away. Okay, good. We'll have a look at the sump. We'll take the sump and go to the workbench and have a look at it there. Okay, and you've got the third one over here as well? Yeah, I haven't tightened it yet. Okay. Yeah, so we're putting the filter back on. When you take this filter off, uh, from previous experience, it's okay letting that drip. Um, I know it dumps more fluid, and we were right, it dumped about another half a quart out, so you want to have that drain pan underneath, very important as you take it off, have it nice and centered over this side, because that's where the o-ring is on the filter. You can see the o-ring on the filter right here. And when you're putting the new one on, you want to make sure you get that o-ring nicely oiled up with a bit of transmission fluid. And you sort of wiggle it into the hole first, and it, sh it should go mostly in. And then you put the bolts in and tighten them. You don't want to do it the other way around. You want to make sure it seats nicely first without cutting the o-ring during the install. And you put the bolts in and torque them up to what, 8 foot-pounds, which is too small for my torque wrench. So it's quite a low torque. We just do it by feel. And they're long bolts, so they can't actually come out even if they fall out. So, what the sump looks like when it's off. These are the magnets. Look, the screwdriver's not sticking to it. And they're pretty well covered in uh, debris of some kind. Probably, it's either gear dust, or I'm hoping it isn't, or it's uh, clutch dust. Probably more likely clutch dust. But it doesn't seem to be a lot in here. It seems to be pretty clean. You can see it coming off on the screwdriver there. And we're going to have a look along the bottom. I'm just going to do a wipe, see what the bottom looks like. And there's, yeah, there's some, a bit of clutch debris in the bottom probably. But this actually looks pretty clean. I mean, there's really not a lot in there. It's pretty clean. Good. 50,000 miles. So. Okay, so I've got the bottom cleaned out. I was using carb cleaner and uh, wiping it out with paper towels to get all the crap out. Now I'm just peeling off the, the old gasket. It's coming off pretty clean. This is the old OEM gasket. It's coming off nice and cleanly. So I'll clean up this flange, use a bit of the carb cleaner to do that, and we'll get the new one back on. Okay, so according to the box that the new gasket came in, you're supposed to be able to push these bolts through and it's supposed to hold them, but as you can see it's not. Uh, at, at the tab locations, oh look, there's tab locations. Yeah, none of them work. So I'm going to have to resort to using... Da -da -da. This is a spray-on sealant, so I'm going to spray it on one side the side that goes against this and I'll do that separately over here and that will make it sticky so it will hold on to this part of it while we get this thing on and then put the bolts in because this special gasket they punch the holes too big at the corner so it doesn't grab the bolt they just pass right through Right, we'll see if that, that's a second coat. It's really not sticking that well, but maybe it will now. Okay, so we've just been around, must have done about four, four circuits, full, four full circuits around here, and we're just tweaking them up, just so they're all about the same all the way around, and every time you go around, they, they seem to loosen off, and then finally, about the third or fourth time around, they stop tightening. And remember, these are low torque, about 10 foot-pounds. So they're all pretty much the same. There's two that are very close over this side, which is the left front of the vehicle. I think those tighten up a bit more because they're so close together. So they're, they're kind of loose. But that's about the right amount. And it took quite a while just running around, getting those things tight to 10 foot-pounds, which is a low torque. And you don't want to definitely don't overdo it because you'll end up with leaks in between the bolts. So, next thing is we're going to put the frame rail back on, 
screw all the plastic back together and then we can think about putting some fluid in the gearbox <laughs> which we mustn't forget to do okay just wanted to show the filter as you can see there's a kind of a coating of that gear dust all over it which is quite amazing and the filter inside I don't know if that shows up that well it's pretty black so it's obviously trapped a lot of this gear dust or clutch dust I have no idea which it is uh, so I'm kind of glad that I changed this at 50,000 miles uh, get some some new fluid in there get it running uh, it took four quarts to fill it a uh, little over actually so uh, price of that fluid's going up used to be five bucks a quart now it's ten down at the dealer so double the price in seven years magic <laughs>